Milak is coming October October third week. Uh, I'll be representing Philippines for AWS Community Talk in South uh, South Korea. Gladly uh, my my topic again and what do. So hopefully it will all be good and it will be worth the experience. Wow. Uh, this is a 
uh, company, a startup in San Francisco that is um, crafting a platform, or not crafting because it's already there, but still improving the platform that enables um, long-term um, rentals for property owners, brokers, and firms. And um, for those on the join team or hiring, uh, just message me, Neil, at OneRent.co, or DM me on Twitter, Neil, at Beta01. So, who's in charge of the system? Is it the sysadmin? If there's no sysadmin, is it the devs? If there's no devs, is it the team lead, the project manager? That's the um, basic question amongst all. So who really manages the system? First, um, in a basic structure of a team, most likely you'll see no ops for small teams. That's good because cost cutting is one of the uh, primary factors you need to consider. And ops are somewhat expensive and it will add it will only add value to the team once there is a pure built infrastructure in place. So if you're just crafting for a platform, there's no need for you to hire ops. But hiring ops is important. So in managing the system, uh, there's a lot of policy way back. Um, a bit of companies was this ITIL list, blah blah. Before, before changes takes place, you need to talk to this guy, talk to that guy, get approval from this guy, and then look the information to other guys inside the organization. Well, that sucks. Because in order for you to make changes, you need to wait for five days. And by the time uh, that comes, or that occurs, the changes that you are about to uh, complete doesn't longer fit the need of the company. You know? Waste of time, waste of effort, and waste of resources. So, uh, in managing systems, there is accountability and trust. That's the common factor. You trust everyone that touches it, and whatever they break, they fix. That's accountability. So, you tell people, hey, this is your, uh, this is your access to the system. It's a time bomb. Whatever you press, it might do something, uh, fix it if it's broken, and if it's not, prove it. Uh, that's how system administration should uh, should be should be embraced. I would say should be embraced. So, in one rep, let's see, as the lead DevOps engineer, uh, what we or what we try to observe and build is. Build the culture that every rock star deserves. We all know that everyone in the team is good at what they are doing. We, I know personally that the people in the team are really knowledgeable about their craft. So, build the culture that everyone deserves. So, on building a culture, you'll see happiness at work. You'll see how happy they were and how happy they will be staying for that company. So rather than saying to the devs, um, are you finished? Okay, what, what do you need? Apache, okay, we need to Apache for them. Well, they can do it themselves. Everything is now in Google. It's just a matter of search and using the right keyword, and that's it. So um, give them the flexibility they need in order to craft a system or an environment that fits what they are doing. Because uh, if, if you will be, um, what they call this, if you will be a hindrance to their success, then you are a bottleneck on the process, which is not good. That's a big no-no for us inside one minute, and that's a big no-no for me as a lead devil guy. So, how about security? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, that's where ACLs and permission takes place. What is ACLs? Uh, ACLs are the level of access they got in terms of access to the system. Permission refers to the restriction they have for a particular system. Why is it very important? Because that's the only way you can control a system without controlling a human. So you 
visit your devs craft your day. Same time, you control the system yourself. The lead dev of God, the system admin, things like that. And you see, devs are very happy. <laughs> they will be very happy for sure. So, this talk specifically points to digital ocean infrastructure. Um, I've been using multiple clouds, and I've been introduced to in-house technologies. And yeah, this talk is primarily about digital ocean infrastructure. So, security, how do we observe security? Well, simple. You utilize digital ocean's firewall technology, you set up a VPN in case someone needs to work at home if he's sick, if he's on a vacation with his family, and then the rest gets access internally inside the office. So, how does it work? Everyone that is accessing the system goes to the firewall, and every environment goes to the firewall. Very simple. You only need to secure the firewall itself. I really believe that securing one place is better than securing multiple places at the same time. Do you believe? Do you agree? Yes. Paano nyo isi-secure yung maraming entry points nyo? O hindi nyo masecure yung isang entry point nyo? So that's, that's what I'm trying to give emphasis. Um, so, firewall with regard to, maybe you can create a firewall for um, HTTP only, um, staging firewall, the firewall, production firewall only. It depends on you. It's very flexible as a digital version. So, this is the good sauce when you use a firewall. In terms, you will add a server. If, for example, you have a web server, a DB server for dev, staging web server, staging that DB server, fraud web server, fraud DB server, everything passes through the firewall, which is a single entry point of everything. Just secure it and you're all good for life. So, ACLs and permissions. Categorize users. How do we categorize users? Uh, there might be classifications, say, senior developers, junior developers, senior sysadmin, junior sysadmin, external users, in case you want to place some integration inside your server, like um, ad hocs or what else? Um, domain, maybe. Um, and system users. System users are typically like dub, 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 dash, data. So it's referring to the web server, Nginx user, or the Postgre, if you're running the Postgre user, which is the system user. So, access credentials. Access credentials refers to the type of access um, uh, logins that every user has. So, from the layout we just discussed, uh, you'll be providing personal VPN keys, personal SSH keys, personal passwords, personal tokens if it's third party, personal API keys if it's third party, and ETC. So, in a diagram, Usually, um, a lot of um, restrictions is is um, as is, is represented by this. Take in development, you used to use your development key as development environment, and then staging key for staging environment, and product key for production environment. Right? Well, I tell you now, this is bad. Why is it bad? So say for example, in development, you'll have a developer, senior developer, or system admin has access to it. And then in staging, you just need senior uh, developer to access it, to deploy it, then you managing all the external stuff. And then on production, it's you who deploy and manage external stuff. That's bad. Why is it bad? What if your team goes gross like this? You have dev one, dev two, three, senior one and two, and you're the only system admin. And then staging will be there's senior one and two, and there's a seven. The production is only you. What happens when senior one leaves the company? It only means that you'll be replacing this key, which they have access, he has access to, 
And this guys right here will need to wait for you to replace the key, which is bad. And then redistribute the key to this guy. What if this guy left? So you need to change the key and give this to senior one and two. Is this add and other devs left? That's really bad. There's a lot of um, overheads in the process. So what is good? So you, the good is you just need to line up your user, categorize it. Uh, if there are devs, the devs, the regular devs, the senior devs, the system. And then you need to have the permission in place saying, hey, dev one, two, three, is access dev. Senior one, two, three, access staging and development. Actually, this is not up to date. Uh, and sys admin, access this. That way, when senior one left, you only need to disable senior one's access inside this servers, which doesn't wait for any user to access or to get the up-to-date permission. So that's how you should observe um, security inside the system. So, passwords, tokens, keys, and secrets is like your toothbrush. You don't want to share it to anyone. Always rem remember that. Treat your own access credentials as your toothbrush. And don't share it. Just don't share it. So, as a DevOps guy, I used to do the lazy work. What does it mean? Embrace automation. How do I embrace automation? I'm glad you asked. Then you will see <laughs> later on. So, make your life merrier. Laziness is one key skill required for ops. That's good. And automate all things. So, demo, demo, demo. By the way, I'm, I'm the one uh, leading DevOps HQ. Uh, DevOps um, community in Manila. And if you're interested about DevOps, we are willing to learn a lot of guys. You can talk about it and uh, can teach you about the DevOps stuff. So let's go for a demo. By the way, this demo is the best way you can control access to your system. So how do how do we best control access to the system? Like in one map.co, we embrace chat logs. Who among you here knows chat logs? Yeah. So the logic behind chat logs is you basically need just need to chat to a slot bot and then the slot bot does the thing. And that's it. So Thank you. 
use this way the one is bought inside the server that does everything. We call it the toolbox. Deploy to staging, deploy to staging server, hindi na sa dead server. 
And then if class the field A, remember the master, which is production. Sa kumad, equal to master, kumad, nasa kumad sa kumad. Chat off, guys. Chat off. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Um, you travel by. I'm not sure if it's specific to uh, stuff. Um, sequential by you processing in um, um, uh, format or parallel process? Ah, parallel siya in a way na pwede dalawang yung sulit na. Same command. Ano ba ba? Marami kaming devs. Uh, dev 1 deploy sa port 3001. Dev 2 port 3002. Papayaan na nila sa Slack po gumawa na. By the time mag-response sa Slack po, tawag ko nila. Kung yung kanilang deployment, mag-up siya in real time. So hindi nila nakapagintay na matapos yung isa. No? Kasi yung inherit na siya eh. Ansible ang nagraran sa background. So hindi inherit niya kung ano yung features na 